so good morning so what we are doing in the last class is about the solar radiation and estimation of solar radiation and that is one important uh, number that we should know uh, while designing the solar photovoltaic systems right? we should know how much energy is coming in uh, on a daily basis monthly basis yearly basis uh, in various regions uh, and things like that so that we had uh, discussed uh, briefly yesterday so that will help us to actually find out uh, uh, what should be the optimal uh, orientation of our solar collector uh, for a given day or given month or we can find out optimal for the whole year and uh, uh, and we should also be able to estimate the global uh, and diffuse solar radiation for a given location and as i said it is very important uh, to understand this because uh, when you are going for the big power plant it makes a lot of difference if your uh, estimation is few percent here and there so what to we do today in this uh, uh, in this tutorial is to actually look at the some of the calculations about this uh, uh, solar radiation that we have done yesterday. <coughs> uh, so to help uh, with this tutorial, uh, my student Sastri, he will help you out. Okay, so before we start, I want to uh, tell you about one thing that uh, the daily solar radiation in India is how much? Average daily solar radiation in India varies from that, that is one number which everybody must be aware, right? 5 to 7 or 4 to 7 kilowatt hour per meter square per day, right? So, daily average solar radiation in India varies like something like 4 to 7 kilowatt hour per meter square per day that number we know very well right now whenever we uh, characterize our solar pv cells and modules what is the number we use for the characterization characterization is am 1.5 spectrum which is corresponding to 1000 watt per meter square right it's corresponding to 1000 watt per meter square so uh, so basically if i have so if you need to find out if if i need so this is one condition so this is one thing that is another thing so if i need to find out how much energy uh, will be generated on a daily basis if i install 1 kilowatt of module okay suppose i am installing 1 kilowatt peak you know peak indicates what is the peak power corresponding to 1000 watt per meter square right so if i if i say if i install 1 kilowatt peak power at any given location and i want to estimate how much energy it will generate on a daily basis so there are some quick ways to look at it how much energy it will generate now if you look at the day if you look at one full day it starts from the morning and afternoon and evening and the day length in the in our country uh, varies from like 10 hours to 12 hours sometimes 13 hours right but during the day the intensity is not 1000 watt per meter square it always keeps on changing right morning it will be very low and then afternoon it will peak and then evening it will go down again so it's very difficult to then calculate energy right so uh, so if i if i draw the plot between the intensity with respect to time the graph would look something like this right so this is like morning 6 o'clock this may be evening 7 o'clock 6 o'clock depending on the season so overall day length is 10 hours 12 hours uh, <coughs> now this 1 kilowatt peak of my module is is actually characterized when the intensity is 1000 watt per meter square here the intensity is changing from 0 to 100, 200, 500, it may be reaching to 800 or 1000. It may be going to 800 for a given particular day or above 800, right. So, if I integrate this whole curve, what would I get? If I integrate this curve, if I do the integration of this curve, what would I get? I get energy, right. Eventually, I am getting watt into hours, the unit of that. So, if integration of this curve will be energy and the unit of that will be watt into hour this is watt intensity is watt per meter square and this is time so watt hour per meter square 
Now, if I integrate this and if I find out how many hours in a day the intensity is equal to 1000 watt per meter square, right. So, I may find out that okay, for uh, within this curve for some number of hours, for some number of hours intensity is equal to 1000 watt per meter square. Okay. So, suppose the integration of this whole curve, the black curve is, uh, suppose the integration of the black curve is, had, has come to like 5400 watt hour per meter square. Now, we are, because we have done th over the day, then it is per day. So, this 5400 watt per meter square can be written as 5.4 hours into 1000 watt per meter square per day, is it okay? This can be written as 5.4 times. Okay, what does it mean? For this particular day, there are 5.4 hours during which the radiation is equivalent to 1000 watt per meter square. Right? Otherwise, the day is very long. It's not 5.4 hours. Day is about 10 hours or 12 hours. But during uh, the if I take the average and find out the number of hours, it is 5.4 hours of the time of the day, the intensity will be equal to 1000 watt per meter square. Is that clear? So, for any if you just have the energy for the whole day, it may be like 4000 watt per hour per uh, meter square per day, it may be 5000, 6000, 7000 depending on the region you are. So, if you go to Rajasthan, in summer you may have 7000 watt hour per meter square. 7000 watt hour per meter square per day means 7 hours of 1000 watt per meter square. Is that clear? Okay. Now, this information I can bring back here. So, if what I what, what was my problem? My problem is that I have 1 kilowatt peak. Peak is important because peak is corresponding to 1000 watt per meter square. By breaking the sol total solar radiation in that of Delhi, what I have done? I have, bro I have broken into 1000 into number of hours. Right? So, I, I can bring this information back here. So, now answer me this question. So, if I have 1 kilowatt peak system installed at a given location, where the solar radiation availability is 5400 watt hour per meter square per day, how much energy it will generate on a daily basis? Everybody got this very clearly? No doubt. Okay, so, because now my module is having 1 kilowatt peak and 1 kilowatt peak at 1000 watt per meter square and because for this particular location I have 5.4 hours of solar radiation and therefore, my module at that location will give me 5.4 kilowatt hour of energy. Right? So, depending on the location you can very easily like without uh, just in seconds you can say okay, if you are using 1 kilowatt module your gener energy generator will be 5.4 kilowatt hour. If somebody says, okay, I have only 500 watt module, then energy generated will be 2.7 kilowatt hour per uh, per day. Right. So if this is in a quick way you can correlate if the daily energy data is available. Now, if this is the daily data, it can be converted into monthly data. Okay. So daily data is 5.4 hour per meter square per day. Monthly data will be how much? What will be the monthly solar radiation? 5.4 into 30, how much it is? So, monthly, how much it is? So, about 160 kilowatt kilowatt hour per meter square per day or, or what else it means? It means what? 160 hours of 1000 watt per meter square per day, right. You can also be written that it is 160 hours of 1000 watt per meter square per day, okay. What is the yearly data? I am sorry, this is per month. What is the yearly data? So, 5.4 into 365. So, 1971 kilowatt hour per meter square per year, this is per month or it is equivalent to 1971 hours of 1000 watt per meter square per year.
fine. So, in a very simple way you can actually estimate the energy that a PV module will generate uh, depending on the solar radiation data. Okay. Now, uh, the, the precaution that you have to take is this 5.4 hours of 1000 watt per meter square where it is available, where, whether it is available at the horizontal ground or whether it is available at a tilted surface. Right? Normally, when we estimate solar radiation, the solar radiation are estimated for the horizontal ground. But you can, what you need to do? You need to estimate the solar radiation at a tilted surface because your module is not going to be on horizontal surface. Your module is going to be a tilted surface. So whether the radiation is mentioned for the horizontal ground or whether it is mentioned for the inclined surface. Like yesterday, I have showed a table. Three data I have showed. One is global on a horizontal surface, diffuse on a horizontal surface, and global at a inclined surface. So, this data whatever you are using, make sure it is in the same plane at which or in which your modules are installed. Is that point clear? Whatever solar radiation data you use, you must use the data for the plane in which your modules are installed. Okay? So, normally the global data are given for the horizontal surface. You make sure that you convert into the solar radiation data on the inclined surface. Fine. So, let us do some calculation. I will hand over, hand over to Sastri now. Hello, good morning. Sir. We will start from the uh, different angles so that to calculate the what would be the number of what would be the total uh, radiation falling on a horizontal surface in terms of global radiation, diffused radiation, as well as total radiation. You are aware of uh, these uh, terminologies, uh, th th these are. Uh, n is the day number of the year, latitude is phi in degrees, longitude is uh, psi in degrees. These parameters are fixed for a particular location. Elevation, this is also fixed for a particular location in which is in kilometers. Declination angle delta, we have to calculate in degrees. Slope of the collector beta, again uh, that is in our hands, we have to fix that uh, uh, slope. And our angle omega is in degrees and number of sunshine hours, just now you have calculated this n hours and maximum number of possible sunshine hours per, per, per a particular location is S max, which is also in hours. And these three parameters now you are going to calculate for a given, for a given particular place. This is called monthly average daily global radiation Hg, uh, Hg bar means this is the average term, which is in kilowatt per meter square day. Actually, we can uh, convert kilojoules per meter square day into kilowatt per meter square day. And this is the monthly average daily diffused radiation Hd bar. And again, the total daily, uh, daily radiation falling on a tilted surface, the total radiation is Hd. And uh, by, calc uh, by calculating uh, the terms like uh, delta, omega s, and s max, and n is available for a particular location, we, we are able to calculate these three particular terms for a given location. Again, I am just refreshing. Day number of the year n varies from 1 to 365. For example, for January 1st, n is equal to 1 and so on. And declination angle is delta is equal to, uh, this is the formula, uh, I think these are given in the sheet. Uh, was it given earlier? Okay. Our angle uh, omega s is equal to cos inverse minus tan by tan delta. Del day length of the is equal to s max is equal to 2 by 15 into omega s. Day length is nothing but uh, sun is rotating, uh, for example, say 360 degrees in 24 hours. Each degree can be each degree is divided 360 degrees by uh, 24 hours gives 15 uh, degrees. So our angle is uh, at, at exactly noon, our angle is 0, and uh, before noon it is positive, and after noon it is neg considered as negative. So two terms. Uh, added 1 by 15 plus 1 by 15 which gives rise to 2 by 15 into omega s which is nothing but the day length. Uh, this is just a simple calculation what could be the value of n for today and calculate the value of n for April 14, 2008. So for April 14, uh, 31 plus 28 plus 31 plus 14. So and 2008 is a leap year so we have to calculate uh, February 29 days. So this would come one number extra, 105. I calculated for April 14, so 105 and 106. This is also important while calculating the global radiations. 
this is uh, defined as the hour angle at sunrise or sunset which is given by omega s is equal to cos inverse minus tan by tan delta and calculated at uh, per due south condition where gamma is equal to 0 degrees. Uh, uh, in the uh, cos theta, I think you have the formula sheet in the cos theta term if you put uh, gamma is equal to 0 then we will get this condition omega s is equal to cos inverse minus tan by tan delta. And this, this is valid for uh, between September 22 and March 21 and the location is northern hemisphere and if the day is in concentration lies between March 21 and September 21 the uh, formula varies uh, uh, and we have to uh, take the slope in, into account omega s is equal to cos inverse minus tan pi minus beta into tan delta. This is because uh, the declination angle is negative in this region and also the motion of the sun enters intersects in the horizontal plane in east west line which also lies in south of east west line passing through the observer on an inclined plane. So, we have to consider this, this is the hour angle corresponds to sunrise or sunset and again this is also calculated by uh, gamma is equal to 0 and uh, this is the minimum of two terms cos inverse minus tan by tan delta comma cos inverse minus tan pi minus beta and uh, tan delta. We have considered modulus here because the hour angle is positive or negative. Positive hour angle corresponds to sunrise and negative hour angle corresponds to sunset and uh, inclined surface facing due north. This is due south and this is due north. Just the uh, uh, pi minus beta is there and this is pi plus beta and these both terms are same and the day length is the same s max is equal to 2 by 15 into omega s where 2 by 15 into minus tan pi minus beta into tan delta this is the problem calculate the hour angle at sunrise and sunset at on June 21st and December 21st for a surface inclined at angle 10 degrees and facing due south gamma is equal to 0. The surface is located in Mumbai 19 degrees 7 minutes north 72 degrees 51 minutes east. This value is latitude this value is longitude latitude is represented in pi longitude is represented as psi. For our calculations only latitude is required longitude is not required. Are there any specialities for these two dates, June 21 and December uh, 21st? I will show the last class slide. These two exactly dates are uh, shown here. This is 21st December and this is 21st June. This is the last class slide. Okay, so is the problem clear to everybody? First, we need to calculate delta particularly at two dates June 21st and December 21st and then we have to calculate the hour angle omega st. So, you need to calculate hour angle at the sunrise. Once you know the hour angle at sunrise, you can find out the sunrise time and same thing this will be equal to, uh, so this is with respect to 12 noon. So, if you know the sunrise time, you can also know the sunset time. Delta formula I am showing uh, going back. Delta so, you will have in your slides also. Delta slide the slide that that uh, yesterday slides you have with you right, right now. So, you will find in from your slides here. So, first of all to uh, in order to calculate our angle what are the uh, parameters you need? You need delta and you need delta and you need phi that is it. Okay, so you need uh, you need to find out omega s sunrise hour angle and sunset hour angle. You need to find out phi and delta. Phi is it given in the problem? It is given because it's a, we are talking about Mumbai, right? So phi is given. Delta you need to calculate. And we have to take account of the slope inclined at an angle 10 degrees, which is beta. This is the collector tilt angle. So, there is a little catch here, you know what is the catch? For us always sunrise time is the same as when the sun rises. For the panel which is inclined to some angle sunrise time is not always the same time when the sun rises. Why do you think that is the case? You got my point? For us always sunrise time is the time when sun rises. For the panels which is inclined sunrise time is not the same time when the sun rises. And the reason being that if you have 
if you have the panel which is inclined, which is inclined like this, so at the time when sun rises, it doesn't see the sun, sun is below, behind it. It doesn't see the sun because sun is behind it. Okay, so you have to add that much angle. So for horizontal plane, you don't have to worry about all this thing. For horizontal plane, sunrise time is a, for the panel same. But if the plane is here, if a module is inclined, then sunrise for the module happens little later. When sun comes to the horizon, for that much top. Is that, is, is that clear to everybody? Okay. So that's what he said. If it is, uh, sun is in the, if you are in a winter time, that is not an issue, right? Because sun is always in front of the observers. So it, sunrise time is always same. But if it is a summer time, the sun will actually rise behind you, or the behind the panel. Then it will take some time for the sun to come in the same plane. And then sunrise time will be little later than the actual sunrise time. So surface inclined at angle 10 actually makes this question a little bit complicated. If you make it zero, flat surface, then the sunrise time is straightforward. Okay? So do it. Uh, What is the value of delta you are getting? The value of delta for December 21st would be minus 23.45. And here we are taking the slope uh, beta term means we have to use this formula omega st is equal to minimum of cos inverse. The and the pi value we are not supposed to take this directly. This is in uh, degrees and minutes. Again we have to convert it into decimal value. 19 degrees 7 minutes. So that this would be 19 plus 7 divided by 60. So that would comes around the pi value is comes around. So omega st is equal to minimum of cos inverse minus tan pi tan delta, and cos inverse minus tan pi minus beta tan delta, and we have to take the minimum value of these two, and that would comes around uh, plus or minus 94 degrees. Pi value is 19.2 uh, degrees and delta uh, 23.45. It is given 19 uh, degrees 7 minutes, right? So, 7 minutes, uh, uh, 7 divided by 60. 60 minutes is equal to 1 hour. So, 19 plus 7 divided by 60. So, it comes around 19.16 so 19.2 we can take. Why minimum of 2? Uh, this value and this value are different because we are considering uh, with slope also. So this value and this value are different, and the declination angle is negative uh, at this case. So our uh, day in consideration is. So the top equation is valid when your uh, panel is flat, lying flat on the ground, horizontal, and the bottom equation is valid when uh, your panel is inclined to some angle beta. 21. So you have calculated that uh, value. You have got this value omega st is equal to plus or minus. Okay, everybody got this simple calculation, right? No, no, nothing. It's just calculate uh, ten and uh, ten phi and ten delta. Again, this would be same, and the only difference is ten minus ten pi minus beta will come. Here, it would be uh, 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 plus ten pi plus beta. This is for December 21st and this is for uh, June 21st. Okay, so let's say it's for June 21st, the, the omega st has come 94 degree, right? Which means what? What time is sunrise is rising? What is the sunrise time? So this is in hour, this is in degree, they convert into the time. Do it. Tell me quickly. 94 degree minus 94 degree plus. Plus is the morning, right? That's on uh, so plus 94 degree, which is the morning time, and minus 94 is the evening time. 94 degree is equivalent to how much? Uh, what is the hour? One hour is equal to 15 degree. Okay. So how much it is? Don't give me around numbers. Give me exact numbers, because on everyday newspapers, you know, in minutes also you see the difference of sunrise and sunset. So what is the sunrise time? 6 hours 26 minutes is uh, cannot be sunrise time, right? Because you have to subtract from the minus, you are going opposite. So your time, sunrise time would be 5 hours, 5 hours 42 minutes. So in the morning 5 o'clock 42 minutes, there will be sunrise. Is that clear? 
you are getting it so 94 degree uh, is equal to 6 hours and some minutes how much minutes it comes 6 hours and 16 minutes okay so now you have to subtract from 12 noon 6 you go back 6 hours 16 minutes which means 5 hours 44 minute is your sunrise time and your sun your sunset time will be also 5 it will be 6 hours 14 minutes in the pm so 6 14 is 6 14 pm is your sunset time right so what is your day length how long is the day okay so omega s you calculated is plus minus 94 degree 1 hour is equal to 15 degree so which means 94 degree is equal to 6 hours 14 minutes plus minus with 16 is it okay 6 hours 16 minutes with respect to noon right Two six. Six point two six hours. Six point two six hours. Or okay, give me in minutes. So six hours and how many minutes? Sixteen minutes. Okay. So this is now from twelve noon. This way 6 hours and 16 minutes, this way 6 hours and 16 minutes, okay? So if I go this way 6 hours, 16 minutes, so I get 5 hours, so 5, uh, 5 hours and 44 minutes is my sunrise time. And uh, this way if I go 6 hours, 16 minutes, then I have 6 p.m. 6 hours and 16 minutes in the p.m. is my sunset time and the sum of the two 12 hours 32 minutes is my day length okay so this day length is what s max the maximum number of sun hours okay this is s max double of the sunrise time uh, sun, sunrise time and sunset time so s this is nothing but your s max so when we estimate a global solar radiation right there is a parameter called s max which is equal to day length maximum number of sunrise uh, sun sun hours right but in reality the number of sun hours will be less than the s max right because of the cloud cover during the monsoon and some other time so the s average will be less than the s max and yesterday i told you from so s is the number of actual sunshine hours and s max is the maximum number of sunshine hours right s a is the average actual number of sunshine hours it may be annual right and this number s a would be less than s max right so from where from where we'll get s a our average value of s from where we will get this s max we can calculate right no problem absolutely as soon as as soon as we know the day for which we want to calculate and the and the location for which we want to calculate we can always calculate s max no problem right we can always calculate sunrise time sunset time and we can always calculate what is the possible maximum number of sunshine hours we can always calculate s a depends on when there is a cloud and when there is no cloud and it is very difficult to calculate that so meteorological stations will provide you what is the value of SA. Now again meteorological stations are not there everywhere. There are only 13 stations in the country. So many times you have to extrapolate and get the value of SA. But this is how it works. Got it? Clear? S max everybody can calculate now. Everybody so that two formula depending on whether tilted uh, the panel is tilted or not tilted. You just need to find out delta and phi. Phi is location and delta you can easily calculate. Everybody? Yes or no, you can't be neutral. Good. We can go forward. Yes, sir. Local apparent time is used to calculate the hour angle at uh, uh, hour angle correspond correspond uh, use it for the calculating hour angle at particular location. 
So, local apparent time is equal to standard time which is I st minus 4 into psi st d minus psi l plus e, where psi is the longitude of the location, st d is the standard location, standard uh, value and psi l is the local value. For a particular location, this, this value will be given and this is common for all uh, standard value and e is the equation of time, where e is equal to 9.87 sin 2 b minus 7.53 cos b minus 1.5 sin b where b comes from n minus 81 into 360 by 364, where n is the day number of the year, for January 1st the value of n is equal to 1 and so on. And for Indian standard conditions, psi STD is given as 82.5 degrees and local value for this problem can be taken from this uh, 72.51 minutes. So, this is the problem determining the local apparent time corresponding to 1430 hours at Mumbai, uh, these are the Mumbai latitude and longitudes on July 1st. In India, the standard time is based on 82.5 degrees east. So, first we can calculate for so this particular day. So, yesterday I told you that uh, for the sun, actual time and the time we uh, as per our watch are different, right? Because uh, as per our watch, the noon time is the time when sun is at overhead position at 82.5 degree east longitude, right? That is our noon time. And therefore, noon time, actual noon time is different for different places as the sun moves. So, therefore, uh, you need to uh, you need to find out the local apparent time for the actual uh, measurement. And the local apparent time can be estimated from this equation. So, the problem is given there, determine the local apparent time corresponding to 14, 30 hours. So, according to our watch, time is 2.30 in the noon. But as for the sun motion, what is the real time? for Mumbai for on July 1. We can start from B value, uh, we can calculate N value for this particular day, uh, this is uh, July 1st. So, July 1st we can calculate N value and then we can calculate B value and then we can calculate E value. So, this is IST is given standard time, this is 82.5 degrees, this is uh, size standard sorry, this is IST is 230 this is Indian standard time and uh, psi STD means uh, standard uh, longitude is this 82.5 degrees and uh, uh, local value is this 72.51 and we can substitute this E value so that we can get the uh, local apparent time. What is the N value for this uh, July 1st? Yes, for July 1st N value is 182. And we can calculate B value. Yes, the value is 99.89. The B value comes around 99.89. And equation of time. This local apparent time and uh, standard time means 230 hours. These two are different uh, basically due to uh, uh, this is uh, uh, from the meridian value and this is due to our uh, solar E comes around minus 3.5, this term comes in minutes and this term also comes in minutes. So, this is standard value is 14 hours 30 minutes. So, we have to subtract 14 hours 30 minutes minus uh, this, this so many minutes and this so many minutes. Again while calculating we have to uh, convert this uh, uh, degrees uh, minutes into decimal value. 72 plus 51 by 60 while substituting here. Equation of time. Yes, minus 3.5. So, what is latitude uh, local apparent time? No, it is already in minutes. It is already in minutes. 82.5. Seventy two point again we have to convert into decimal value seventy two plus fifty one by sixty. So this is in decimal value, this is not in decimal value. Okay, got it. You got the value of E and you got the value of B. So if you put it there, you will got uh, how much time you need to subtract from IST. How much time? How many minutes? 
you have to subtract 42 minutes from IST to get the local apparent time. Okay, so 14 is uh, this uh, instead of 14.30, it will occur at 13.48. Okay, what does it mean? So who is advanced? Mumbai is advanced. Okay, so sun actually noon will occur earlier in Mumbai by that many minutes. How many? 48 minutes. 42 minutes. Okay. So what does it mean if you want to incline your panel for the noon time and if you follow the Indian standard time then you are going you are doing wrong by 42 minutes big difference right so you have to find a local apparent time and then incline your panel got getting it so the noon at Mumbai will not occur at the noon as per the time it was the clock it will occur earlier because a stand Indian standard time is based on 72.5 uh, is based on 82.5 is everybody got this point very important yeah, the difference is not small it's a very big difference right and therefore your uh, gain or loss in energy can be also significant so when you want to uh, put it horizontal don't put it for as per your watch put it as per the local apparent time so you need to calculate the local apparent time and then you can do it fine it tells you that the noon in at Mumbai would occur earlier than the Indian standard time noon. That's what it is telling, right? How much earlier? 42 minutes earlier. Okay. 82.5 is which location? What is the location? 82.5? 82.5 is the standard. Uh, which location? This Indian standard. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm sorry. So it will actually it will occur later, right? So where sun rises earlier at 72 or at 82? Sun rises earlier at 82. Okay, so which means Mumbai will be slower later actually. Sun rises earlier at 82 longitude, then it comes to 72 degree longitude. Yes, okay. Subtracting from that. So which means that uh, the I'm sorry. So, so noon uh, noon will occur at Mumbai at 42 minutes later than the Indian Standard Time. Sorry about the earlier thing. It is it will occur later because the sunrise will actually occur at 80, 80, 80 uh, degree first and then 72. Okay, which means when you want to put it, so at, so basically at Indian Standard Time, sun will not be at the overhead position. It will be little bit at uh, towards the east still. So don't blame sun. Okay, don't blame it. Okay, it's already 12 and it's, it has not come. It is late today. Not like that because the IST is actually set for that particular time. Okay, fine. Next problem. Now we can go for the global radiation for a particular horizontal surface. Okay, so now this is estimating the global solar radiation on a horizontal surface. Normally, we estimate the monthly averaged daily global solar radiation. Okay, so it is monthly averaged daily global solar ra radiation for a given su surface. S max, we you can calculate already, right? That we have done in the first problem. S bar must be given. Average value of sunshine hour, actual sunshine hours. A and B are constant, must be given. H O is the monthly average daily extraterrestrial solar radiation outside the Earth atmosphere. And if you know everything, then you can find out Hg bar, which is the monthly average daily global solar radiation. Okay. This is for a particular location. H naught uh, is 24 by pi into this thing. So, for for a given location, H naught is calculated from this, and H G is the monthly average daily global radiation, and A and B are the constants. Where uh, S and S max or S is the maximum number of sunshine hours, and Average sunshine hours and S max is the maximum number of sunshine hours. So from S0 bar, uh, bar, tell me what parameter you don't know. 24 by pi. 24 by pi. So you know everything. N you know omega s is the sunrise hour angle, phi is the latitude of a location, delta is the declination angle, and again omega s. A and B are the constants predicted. 
and uh, there are some measured values for A and B for some, uh, kind of 24 values are there and we can take uh, the nearest approximate value for A and B. So, if the location is near to some determined value, predetermined value then we can take that value uh, as A and B. And here this omega s term is in radians. So, we have to calculate omega s and again it uh, in degrees and we have to convert it into again it into radians. Pi is the latitude of the location and delta we can calculate and omega s we can calculate and a and b values are given. S, s bar will be also given and s max we have to calculate from 2 by 15 into omega s. This is the problem. Estimate the monthly average daily global radiation on a horizontal surface at Vadodara, 22 degrees north and 73 degrees 10 minutes east during the month of March if the average sunshine hours per day is 9.5. So, this is S bar. And this latitude is given, pi value is given. Uh, nearest approximate value for Vadodara can be Ahmedabad and Ahmedabad data will be available. So, I am giving you the values of A and B constants A is 0 0.28 and B is 0 0.48 and representative day of the month uh, for H naught uh, for H naught calculations some uh, days are uh, approximated uh, in a particular month because we are calculating monthly average uh, daily global radiation. So, this day particularly represents the whole month radiation. That day is uh, uh, for March. We can take it as 16. So right. So as we said, the expression is for monthly averaged daily global solar radiation. So that it is daily global solar radiation, but it's the average over the month. Now people have found out that there are some day of the month. If you do the calculation for that particular day, it is the radiation is equal to the monthly average. Right. So this day, for example, January 17th. If you calculate the global radiation, daily global radiation on January 17th, is it, it is equal to the monthly average value of daily solar radiation. So, for each month, there is one day. If you do the calculation for that particular day, it is equal to the monthly average. <coughs> and it is not surprised that these days are in the middle of the month, most likely, right? It is not surprising. So, January 17th, February 16th, March 16th, April 15th. So, of course, when you take average, it is it is for the middle of the month or more or less. We can start from calculating n value for March 16th and then delta value. The n value for March 16th, here we are not talking about any slope of the uh, solar collector. So, we can directly take omega s is equal to tan inverse uh, cos inverse minus tan pi minus tan delta. So, the delta value for March 16th would be omega s is equal to minus cos inverse, cos inverse minus tan pi tan delta. Once we calculate omega s and we can substitute in H naught and A and B values are already given and S bar value is already given, S max will be calculated from omega s which is 2, 2 by 15 into omega s. The value of omega s. Here only we can use it omega s in radians. Here we can directly use in degrees. So these are all degrees, pi delta, pi delta. These are all in degrees, but the individual term is in radians. This is s bar. 9.5 is the s bar, and the day length is 2 by 15 into omega s. That is s max term. This S max term is the 2 by 15 into omega S. Here, one uh, omega S in radians is around 1.55 radians. 2 by 15 into omega S. Omega S is around 89.02. 2 by 15 into 89.02. 15. Day length. Day length is S max is the day length. Omega is the hour angle and S max is the day length. Go back to the expression of omega s and s max, s max. S max is 2 by 15 into omega s where 2 by, uh, we can sub 89.02 into 2 by 15. Uh, here uh, we are considering the slope of the uh, 
solar collector. So, uh, for December 21st, to there, there are two conditions for Omega ST. June 21st and December 21st, uh, this value will be used and uh, after that December uh, 21st to June 20, this is for September 22 and March 21st and this is for March 21 and September 22. So, we have to uh, calculate the minimum value uh, in between these two range. Here we are not considering the slope of the uh, collector, so we can take directly this value omega s is equal to minus tan pi tan delta, cos inverse minus tan pi tan delta where s max is 2 by 15 into omega s. Okay, I think enough time we have spent on this, go, go, go to the final. Okay, uh, what is the s bar given to the problem, right, go to the problem, s bar is 9.5, right, what is s max? S make will be greater than S bar, right? It's a maximum number of sunshine hours. How much is it? Is it? So S max is eleven point nine eight. Okay, so here uh, just write down. So S, uh, what is? How much is A? What is A? A and B is given, right? A is point two eight. B is 0.48, S bar is 9.5, 9.5 what? Hours. Hours, okay, and S max, S bar max, 11.9 hours, okay, H0 bar, H0, H0 bar, that is extraterrestrial solar radiation. Monthly average daily extraterrestrial solar radiation. Got it? Anybody? What is the problem? What is the problem in calculation? Okay, so this is uh, this is the expression. N is seventy five, phi is twenty two, delta is minus two point four two. All values are given, right? Okay? So the omega has has to be in radians, 1.55. Omega s has to be in the radians. Omega s in degree is 89.02. Omega s in radians is 1.553. Right? That much you can do. If you did not get it right here, do it at home. Or in your train while going back. When I was studying, uh, our professor has given one assignment and we, there was not enough time, so he said, okay, do it in the train and as soon as you get down, post it before going home. So we did our assignment in the train, we posted it before we reached home. So that you can do, right? If you did not get it right here, you have all the time to do the calculation in your train. Unless until you are going by flight, for which we are not reimbursing. So what we are calculating here is HG bar. That is what we are calculating, right? That is a, a monthly average daily global solar radiation. Everything else we need to fill in. So HG bar is what we are calculating. Monthly average daily global solar radiation. And H0 bar is monthly average daily global extraterrestrial solar radiation outside the Earth atmosphere. <coughs> Fine. So, how much is the S0 bar come? Anybody? And what do you think would be the unit of it? What What do you think would be the unit of S0 bar? What hour, right? It's the energy we are talking about. So, what hour per meter square per day? It's a monthly average, but daily global radiation. It's not monthly. It's a monthly averaged daily global radiation. Okay, uh, Shastri just show the value. I think they all want to do it in the train. H0 is equal to 1600. But the earlier expression is for kilojoules, right? Yeah, this is for. Oh, because 3600 has been multiplied, so it is actually converted into kilojoules. But that 3600 wouldn't have been there, then it would have been kilowatt hour. So because it has been converted into kilojoules. So 34,206 kilojoules per meter square per day is H0. 
So put the other terms and you will get HG bar. And HG bar, that is the monthly LOH daily global radiation is less than, expected to be less than H0 or more than H0? Expected to be less, right? Because during the, while the ray is going through the attachment, something will get absorbed and, uh, and scattered and all. So HG bar is going to be less than that. Some of these kind of ideas are useful in checking whether you're you're going doing the right way or not, right? So S bar has to be less than S max, S bar max. HG has to be less than H zero. So these are the ideas are good to check whether you're doing your calculation in right direction or not. Okay, so what you get eventually is 6.3 kilowatt hour per meter square per day at that location. 6.3 kilowatt hour per meter square per day or we can also call it 6.3 hours of 1000 watt per meter square right we can also write it as 6.3 hours of 1000 watt per meter square per day fine so I, I think many of you get used to this kind of calculations it's a little longer but uh, it gives a lot of idea about what happens outside the earth and what happens on the earth right in terms of the radiation. So please do this calculation. Is there any other problem? That's it. Okay, fine. We'll stop here.